he published his first book at age 40, a Pulitzer Prize. James A. Michener was born three years after American brothers Orville and Wilbur Wright made the first sustained piloted flight of an airplane in 1903. A naval officer during World War II, he flew almost everything that had wings and walked away from three complete crashes, including a DC-3 that went down in the Pacific Ocean during the war. Imagine what his excitement would be if he got to see the 555-seat A380, with both decks the entire length of the fuselage and both decks longer than that famed flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Michener grew up in a small town in rural Pennsylvania. After dozens of famous titles, five honorary doctorates, and decades of globetrotting, the author embarked on his most difficult work at age 85, The World is My Home, an autobiography. When I was a country lad of five, begins his exceptional memoir, the farmer living at the end of the lane had an aging apple tree that had once been abundantly productive but had now lost its energy and ability to bear any fruit at all. The farmer on an early spring morning one day, I still remember, hammered eight long and rusty spike nails into the trunk of the tree. Four close to the ground, well spaced, and four higher up around the circumference. That autumn, a miracle happened. The, plain spoke, the plain spoken writer continues, the tired old tree, having been goaded back to life, produced a bumper crop of red, juicy apples, bigger and better than we had ever seen before. When I asked how this had happened, the farmer explained to me, hammering in the rusty nails gave it a shock to remind it that its job is to produce apples. Was it important that the nails were rusty? Maybe it made the mineral in the nail easier to digest. Was eight important? If you're gonna send a message, be sure it's heard. Could you do the same next year? A substantial jolt lasts about 10 years. Will you knock in more nails then? By that time, we both may be finished. That's what the farmer said, but I was unable to verify his prediction, for by that time, our family had moved away from the lane. In business, like in life, we have some fairly large, rusty nails hammered into our trunks, not to be compared to the humbling rusty nails we encounter in life, the travel industry nevertheless has its fair share of nails and apples. I've been tracking this space a very long time. I used to look like that, which means I've been observing, pondering, and prognosticating about travel's rusty nails and juicy red apples for a very long time. From the very first GDS, to the early online travel forays, to e-ticketing. I remember many people thought e-ticketing would never happen. To the dot-com boom, to the bubble burst, to the post-911 revival, to the strip and flip private equity chapter, to SAAS overtaking ASP, and then some. I reflect from a rare and experienced perspective on how much has changed and how much will. Here is my first rendition of an online travel booking schema. At first glance, it probably looks very familiar. But upon closer inspection, you will see curiosities that definitely date me, such as Common Carrier, Arbach, Gateway, 
Prodigy and CompuServe. How long ago did I state this case? 1993. This vision became reality by the mid to late 1990s. Established travel sellers rejected the online wave en masse, claiming those cold, cruel, calculating computers would never replace the old way. Lo and behold, Travel 1.0 made its grand entrance. And unlike other hot e-commerce verticals, where established players dueled new entrants for the online sweepstakes, most travel retailers eschewed the frontier and opted instead for the sidelines. That's how it was back then. And I have traveled a long road since those early days, scrutinizing the travel distribution marketplace at every turn and braving many a metaphoric rotten tomato en route. Since founding Focusrite in 1994, our company has researched, tracked, analyzed, and opined on the strategic center of the world's largest industry. We observe, we forecast, we stick our neck out for a living. That's Focusrite's currency. So we know those rusty nails will keep on coming. Two years ago at the Focusrite conference, right here at the Omni Resort in Champions Gate, many of us were here then. We noted how many entrepreneurs were replaced on stage with lawyers, bankers, and more corporate types. Controversial talk two years ago was definitely muted. Everyone witnessed Travel 1.0's swan song. Then, at last year's Focusrite conference, we cast a Hollywood-sized spotlight on Travel 2.0, our industry's next rusty nail, so to speak. The entrepreneurs were back, the social networking floodgates opened, liberating a positive, advancing force that permanently altered our industry's landscape. Advantage customers. Travelers took control, finding and creating their perfect trip, not just their cheapest trip. Some Travel 1.0 companies forged ahead, confronting and embracing Travel 2.0, while other Travel 1.0 pioneers resisted, ironically being reticent toward 2.0. And some laggards are now busy playing expensive catch-up. And for those who have been living under a rock, the next set of rusty nails and basket of juicy red apples are upon us big time. The long tail. The genesis of the long tail is rooted in the rise of the internet itself. Before e-commerce's ubiquity, brick-and-mortar retailers rationalized that low-volume products were not worth the shelf space, the warehousing, distribution, marketing, and labor costs. Selling low-volume products was not economical. Enter the likes of Amazon, eBay, and Netflix. A retailing explosion occurred around so-called non-hits. For example, out-of-print publications, one-of-a-kind things, and documentary films. 